that there's a new reality among Democrats that they will not be able to pass the Build Back Better Act before Christmas or indeed before the end of this year. And it boils down to two fairly simple problems. They don't have a finished bill yet. The bill's not back from the parliamentarian. They don't have solutions on things like the paid leave portion or the state and local tax deduction portion. So they don't have a finished bill and they don't have the votes. Joe Manchin continues at his own one-on-one -on -one <laughs> negotiations with the White House. He is not committed to supporting this bill. And right. there just aren't enough days left in the year to get this bill finished, to convince Joe Manchin to get on with it. And so Democrats are now conceding, our sources are now conceding that Build Back Better will happen next year. <laughs> Whether there can be another big legislative item, perhaps a voting rights push before the Please. end of the year, is another question. But it won't be Build Back Better headed to the president's desk as an early Christmas present. Oh! Uh-oh! <laughs> this is what happens when you give up your leverage. And that is what they did in the House. Remember the Progressive Caucus? Remember them? Uh, they were going to uh, insist on both at the same time because they knew that if they gave Joe Manchin his infrastructure package, he would not pass Build Back Better. He would not pass Build Back Better. And so uh, that's kind of where we are. Just so you know, the House of Representatives has gone home for Christmas holiday. Seriously, dude, they're gone. They're not coming back till January 10th. January 10th. I mean, this is a great job. If you can get $174,000 a year, you're off for Christmas starting in the middle of December. You're, you don't even have to wait till you get into the 20s, like, uh, you know, the 21st, 20s. No, no, you could do it in the teens. I, I And then you don't have to come back January 3rd, 4th, 5th, depending on when uh, New Year's Eve falls. And I'm being kind here, okay? No, they come back January 10th. The only reason they would come back, the only reason they would come back is if Joe Manchin decides that he doesn't want to give the entire United States of America, especially its children, or it's, uh, you know, infrastructure, it's, 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 it's the, I mean, the climate change, the weather yesterday, holy crap. You know, he wants to give us, for all of our suffering, a lump of coal and lots of coal ash in your drinking water. That is his idea of a West Virginia Christmas. Unbelievable. A lump of coal in your stocking over there. Stay out of my stocking, mansion. Oh, it's just, uh, Wow. So, you know, yesterday we had this massive, uh, you know, 50-year record setting, I, some, some crazy amount of uh, a weather that set records yesterday. But you have to remember that the records that they broke yesterday were recent records that were broken last year. You remember the Texas uh, freak winter storm that just de de decimated their uh, grid because they weren't winterized? They didn't expect that the weather in Texas would, uh, you know, actually freeze their electric grid, so they didn't bother to winterize it. Yeah, because, you know, they're such good leaders on, you know, anything to do with the future, the Republican Party is, right? So I'm looking at um, these th th this 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 massive weather event yesterday. Historically fierce winds. This is how it's been reported. Re historically fierce winds, portions of the Midwest damaging buildings, closing highways, overturning trucks, and leaving more than half a million people now without power. Wednesday, yesterday, broke the record for the most gusts over 75 miles per hour in over 15 years, which means that the records that we had for hundreds of years were broken 15 years ago, and now we broke them yesterday again. And let's not build back better. Let's just not do it. We don't need it. Who needs it? Who needs $100 billion dollars? in destruction remediated by 55 billion in investment you see when you put it like that well duh right but that is what it is build back better invests 55 billion dollars in resiliency and cutting uh cutting pollute i'm sorry 555 billion the largest single investment in the clean energy economy in history across buildings transportation industry electricity agriculture, climate smart practices across land and water,
it actually achieves 50 to 52 percent reduction in greenhouse gas emissions below 2005 levels which is when we started breaking all these records for really crazy climate events it grows domestic industries it creates good union jobs and it increases and advances environmental justice oh who needs it here is what it does it would actually deliver to us the consumer substantial rebates middle class families would save money they would be incentivized and paid to shift to clean energy and electrification. Consumer rebates and credits that are included in the Build Back Better framework save the average American family hundreds of dollars in energy costs. They include enhancement and expansion of home energy and efficiency tax credits, the creation of a new electrification-focused rebate program, cuts the cost of installing rooftop solar for a house by around 30%. It shortens the payback period by five years. The electric vehicle tax credit lowers the cost of an electric vehicle for a vehicle made in America with American materials and union labor by $12,500 for a middle-class family. In addition, it helps rural communities tap into clean energy opportunities through targeted grants and loans through the Department of Agriculture. It ensures clean energy technology from wind and turbine to solar to electric cars will be built in the United States with American-made steel and other materials. It advances environmental justice through new clean energy and sustainability accelerators that invest in projects around the country delivers 40% of the benefits of the investment to disadvantaged communities. It funds port electrification, deployment of cleaner transit buses, trucks, supports critical community capacity building, includes grants to environmental justice communities. It creates a civilian climate core with over 300,000 members that look like America. It is a brand new diverse workforce that would conserve public lands, booster community resilience, address the changing climate, and it would put good paying union jobs within reach of many, many, many Americans. We're talking 300,000 new jobs. Uh, he's against it, Manchin is. That doesn't even touch on the child tax credit that is literally taking millions. It goes right now to 35 million homes. The child tax credit, which people got yesterday, that would be the last payment, thanks to Joe Manchin's lump of coal gift of his no vote, as a Democrat, no less, of a rural place like West Virginia, where 67,507 children live in poverty, the seventh highest child poverty rate in this country among the 50 states. He's saying that the last... $240 to help them pay for clothes and food and child care so that they can maintain their jobs, can still report for duty at work, is a bad, bad thing. It's a bad investment. And so he's a no. He's a no. After looking at all of these climate crises that are going to cost us a hundred billion dollars. Last year, that's what we spent. We spent on, uh, you know, rebuilding homes and schools and small businesses, a hundred billion dollars. Now we're talking over 10 years, over 10 years, which is $55 billion a year to stop that spending. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.